of many things. But the most familiar accusation is that I mix politics with religion. Well, why not? Aren't they the two most potent forces in the world today? Aren't we controlled by one or by the other? So why shouldn't they be brought together to work in perfect harmony? Work to create a better world for us all. She's wonderful tonight. Annie's wonderful every night. You know what? Because she believes in every word she says. Really believes. So do you. Sure. But I temper my belief the with other, a touch of hard-headed realism. The accusation against me is that I am a communist. No. They say I am a communist because I oppose the bosses. Just over forty-one thousand dollars. Well, that's even better than Boston. You know, could be even better still. Now that's when she ought to make the appeal for the money, not on their way in, but then, right? Right when she's got them in the palm of her hand. I'll have to talk to her about it. Still, forty-one thousand dollars isn't chicken feed. mind the opposition. I don't mind the accusations. Because you and I both know what that opposition means, don't we? Yes. It means they are getting scared of this movement. Yes. It means that I am getting through to them, getting through to where it hurts. That's a wind-up. Better get our car around the back. But I don't mean I. Because in all humility, this would not be possible without you. The Workers Christian Alliance. Workers Christian Alliance. That means you and me, brothers, sisters. That means you and me. Handsome woman, eh? Not bad for an old one. Oh. oh! She's no more than 45. That's what I meant. Well, you can't deny the power of her appeal. She speaks with a passion, real passion. Yeah, passion for power. Yeah? Annie Irvin, agitator. Agitator? Not once has she ever advocated violence. She always speaks out against it. Nevertheless, it was violence that put her where she is today. Oh, come on, we all know the story, Annie was just another crank, a political non-runner till someone took a shot at her, missed her heart and hit the public right in this fickle one. And now she's a mixture of Joan of Arc and the Toll Puddle Mart. She has a big following, millions. And everywhere she goes, there's trouble. Anyway, a big following's mainly in California, so why us? Because she's coming here. 
She's coming home next week for one special meeting. Highly publicised, of course. Of course. You can't keep any out of the papers. Gosh, I don't end with a special branch. Won't be special branch. CI5, we will be looking after Annie Irvin. Oh, for God's sake, why us? Because I want it. Because I say so. Because I want it. Because I say so. Good. And what he says goes. Yeah. Ah, oh, this could be different, though, you know. I've got a feeling. Sense it. Annie Irvin's different. Yeah, she comes under the category of visiting VIP, don't she? Yeah, wish she'd visit someplace else. <laughs> yeah, so do I. And Cowley wants her looked after. Well, he might find that harder than it sounds. Oh, because someone tried to kill her before? Yeah, I might well try and kill her again. Yes. Yes, I'll be pleased to appear tomorrow night. Yes. TV interview. Tomorrow night we have the ambassador's dinner. Oh. We can fit it in. Or cancel it. Sometimes not to appear at the last moment is actually better than appearing. I know, my dear. I said I will appear. Yes, but... Oh, we can fit it in. I'm sure we can fit it in. Or at least try. Well, it's not just a question of trying. I've said I will appear. Of course, if we rearrange the party schedule... You can't. We just can't... Oh, damn. Yes? Miss Irvin never gives an interview without a photographer. It's a matter of policy. This is impossible. In Chicago all over again, you've set Annie too tough a schedule. She can do it, can't you? Stanley, sometimes I think you look on me just as a piece of valuable property. Don't forget... Lax. Lousy. Lousy than lousy. You are now all dead. What he means is you would be dead if it wasn't us. Lovable us. Yeah. Now <laughs> oh, you can relax. I'm not going to kill you. Although almost anybody else could have done. Your security's lousy. Yeah. Good job we tested it. It is, isn't it? Mm. Just consider us the finger in the dike, man. Yeah, we're uh, CI5. I'm Doyle. He's Bodie. What kind of a joke is this? Do you know who you're dealing with? I know who we might have been dealing with. Three corpses. One black, two white. Don't worry. We'll have security so tight you'll have to send out for oxygen. We don't have to stand for this. I'll call the embassy. Come on, Stanley. They're just doing their job. And very well, too. I shall feel quite safe with you two around. CI5, you say? Yeah, criminal intelligence. Mr. Cowley's orders. Cowley? George Cowley? Yep. Georgie sent you. <laughs> I was thinking of when Cowley was showing us that film. And he said, handsome woman, eh? <laughs> and you said... Yeah, I know what I said. Not bad for an old one. Yeah. Georgie. <laughs> this is not a job for CI5, you know. I know. It's only because Cowley wants it, because he says so. What about this uh, Irvin woman? Do you think she and Cowley oh, ever... Oh, come on. Cowley and the opposite sex. You must be joking. Well, they must be an attractive man, I suppose. I mean, he's a bit aggressive, but... He would be attractive, wouldn't he? Not now. Anyway, too busy ducking insults. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, I was just thinking, Cowley and a woman. <laughs> yeah. He'd kick the door down, throw her on the bed. And frisk her. <laughs> huh? The extra man on the floor above. In position. And the man across the street. Ready and waiting. Good. Good. Well, we seem to have Annie Irvin secure, eh? I trust you both. I trust your judgment. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, sir, um, well, Doyle and myself, sir, we were, well, we'd feel more secure if, uh, no, well, we'd feel happier, sir, if uh, you'd go there yourself. Check us out. Go there myself? We'd feel happier, sir. Go there myself? Yeah, give her the one over, you know. The assignment serves so stake out. Yes. Yes, that might be a good idea, Bodie. Yes, I might just do that. All right, carry on. Cupid. Hey! All right, Turner. But nice, very nice. Keep it up. 
we are beginning to challenge the governments of Stanley. Stanley. Have I changed so much? Georgie! Georgie, come in. Come in. You've hardly changed at all. Oh, the hair's thinned down a wee bit. Georgie, it's good to see you. And you, Annie. You're looking wonderful. Oh. It's true. It was always true. Whenever I see you, I wish I had sore eyes. What? Well, you'd be a sight for them, wouldn't you? I've been half expecting you. Well, your men earlier today. You're looking after me now, aren't you? An ambition finally realized. To look after you, Annie. Would you like a drink? I wouldn't say no. A wee dram of pure malt scotch. <laughs> oh, no, I know you haven't changed. Tell me all your news. News? Well, how long is it since we last met? Must be all of ten years. Oh, close on. My God, ten years. Where have they all gone, Georgie? In my case, into hard and diligent work. You never married, then? Of course not. You didn't have to ask that, Annie. You know that as far as I'm concerned, you will always... Cheers to you, Georgie. Aye. Cheers. I've been married twice. Well, you always were a passionate woman, Annie. Foolish, too. I've been divorced both times. Oh, I know, I know. I've kept up with you, Annie. God knows you're a difficult enough woman to keep up with, but I've kept up. But we had fun, didn't we, George? Do you remember the fun we had? I'll never forget it. Oh, it's great to have you back, Annie, if only for a few days. And to tell you the truth, since I heard you were coming, I've planned a few things. Even got a couple of tickets for the opera. Remember how we used to queue up for the opera? We sat so high up in the gallery, you said they should have provided oxygen. <laughs> I'm going to be rather busy, George. No, no, I'll have none of that. A few hours off, Annie. If not for me, you owe that to yourself. And this is the Scala Company. It's a complete sellout. But I'm fairly important now, you see. I can wangle a few tickets if I have to. So, if I pick you up here about half an hour before... Annie! Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you had company. Stanley. This is George Cowley, an old dear friend. This is Stanley Langdon. Stanley is my campaign manager. Delighted to meet you, Mr. Cowley. Annie has often spoken about you. How do you do? <laughs> now I understand you'll be looking after her for me. Well, I'd like to talk to you about that later, if I may. I'm sure your security arrangements are first class, but uh, it would help if I could know about them too. My office door is always open to you, Mr. Langdon. To both of you. Well, it was good to see you, Annie. You're going so soon? We've both got a pretty full schedule ahead of us. I'll see you again before I go. Perhaps. Oh, Mr. Langdon, I've got a couple of tickets for the opera here. I won't be able to use them myself. Maybe you and Annie would like to. <laughs> we won't have the time. Anyway, opera. We neither of us care for it. Good night. Do you think she suspects? No, she feels totally safe. I don't mean about that. Does she suspect about us? No, Annie believes only what she wants to believe. There are many similarities. Similarities? You are beautiful, just beautiful. We're going to make her the martyr of the decade. Like Kennedy or Christ. Or Perron. They, all of them, their influence was greater after their death. I suppose that's what martyr really means, a new beginning, stronger. Like Phoenix rising up from the ashes. Yeah. I like that. Annie Irving like a phoenix. Dead, but, uh... But her soul goes marching on. Stronger than before, richer. And you, a spiritual leader. Uh, would you accept treasurer? 
<laughs> I'd better get back or she'd be wondering where I am. How will you do it? I've been thinking about that. Annie's death will have to be an event in itself. Something so horrendous that it will shock the world. Hey, do you reckon they were childhood sweethearts? Eh? Cowley and Annie Urban. Well, they must be ten years older than she is. Childhood sweethearts, never. Yeah, I reckon it's a story there, though, don't you? Eh? Yeah. Love unrequited, I think. Mm. You turning sentimental, Bodie? No. Nosy. And I'm also something of an opportunist. Listen, Cowley's got a file on us like that. He even knows what side of the bed we get out of. And whose bed? Yeah, so it'd be nice to have something over him, wouldn't it? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Let's face it, we don't know much about George Cowley. Yeah, except he's the best man I've ever worked for. Hmm. Well, I'm not knocking his virtues. You can list them from A to B. <laughs> Come on, you know you like him. OK, so I like him. But I'd like him even more if you let us know a little bit more about him. You know, his Achilles heel. More human. What, well, human enough for a childhood sweetheart? Mm. <laughs> mm. All right, the dates are wrong. What about MI5? What about it? Well, when he was in MI5, Annie could have been the beautiful spy. Uh, you know, uh, hitched her up over a wall, caught a glimpse of her knickers. University. That's when he met her. He was a major then. Didn't finish his education, you see. Too busy fighting a bloody war. As soon as it was over, he called up. Went to university, and that's when he met this Annie Irvin. She was a slip of a girl then, but tough, very tough. His Achilles heel. I used to wonder about that. And then one day I ran into the tomb in a pub down by the river. Of course, the Major had no sight to him. I'd just been a corporal, but it was a low Charlie. Have a drink, Charlie. And I watched the pair of them. And I watched him watching her. What happened, Charlie? She's a woman, isn't she? And a tough one. Funny, though, I once helped carry him nearly a mile over open country with a broken leg. No. Every step agony. But it was nothing compared with the hurt I saw when she left him. What happened, Charlie? I shouldn't have told you. I wouldn't expect you to go chasing up the wrong tree, not understanding. Now, you're not going to go blabbing about this. No. Women. These will be distributed at least one hour before her meeting begins. Our march will start from the north side, and the chant will be just one word. Because the boys that you buy in never seem to be able to remember more than one word. That word will be whore. It's a very calculated word. It's hard, it's easy to shout, and it's very insulting. Insulting enough to guarantee a physical retaliation. Besides, anyone on our side will know what we mean. She's been married twice. She's currently sporting a black paramour. Frank. You will arrange a spontaneous demonstration outside the meeting place proper. Rehearse your boys carefully in that. Hmm? Any questions? Right. And let us all make sure the fists fly. Hmm? Oh, <coughs> terribly sorry. I take it this is all in the cause of law and order? Something like that. You see? Pockets. <sighs> Mr. Howard. I have never seen that before. It was planted. Oh. You planted it. Did you see me plant that? Oh. He just bumped into me. Well, you better look where you're going, then, hadn't you? Come on, it's a bust. <laughs> OK, wait outside. Hello, George. 
John. Those boys of yours are very good. Neatest plant I ever experienced. I say them well. As you did me. Sit down. Surely you haven't forgotten that six bloody weeks of training, that assault course. I never will. You pushed me, George. You showed me what I was really capable of. Yes, I've got a lot to answer for. Major Cowley, 16th Special Commando. A long time ago. We were close then, George. Really close. You know, I've often thought if you'd thrown in with me... With your bigotry? No, John, you and I are diametrically opposed. I respect you as a soldier, but for everything else about you, your ethics, your politics, the emotions you engender, I have a loathing of such depth you could never measure it. My uh, lawyer will get me out, you know. Eventually, after the investigation has run its course. Approximately one hour after Annie Irving's meeting is concluded. Which prison do you prefer to be remanded to? You did me a favour or two during the war. I'll not forget that. Which one? Uh, would Bedford be possible? I could have food sent in. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a rather nice little restaurant nearby that... Uh... Bedford it is. My demonstration will go on without me. Yes. And I hate to admit it, but without you, it'll lack power. It'll be a bomb without a fuse. Miss Irvin's chair should be well forward, centre of the stage. I prefer it to be off stage. Almost anybody could shoot it from back there, you know. Never mind. We'll have a man up there. Bodie will take the circle and I'll be right here in the front row. What about when she comes out into the audience? Out? She always does, to meet the people. It's part of her... Act? It's part of her humanity, her bonhomie. She always comes down to meet the people, to shake a few hands. Well, one of those hands could be holding a gun. What's all that doing at the back? It's our experience that those who can't get into the meeting tend to congregate around the building, and a few remain at the rear, hoping to catch a glimpse of Miss Evan. What, all that for a few people? Oh. Annie has a saying, from the few grow the many. Hmm. Adam and Eve wouldn't argue with that. Cloudy. Do you believe this place has got a cellar? Yeah. Got linked to the main drainage system, eh? This is where you plan to have it happen, isn't it? I've organized meetings. I've organized rallies. But never a martyrdom, I never a martyrdom. Until now. You always manage to cap me, you know that? Ahead of my thoughts. That's why I like you. Like? Love. Langdon. Not here. You come highly recommended, Mr. Hammer, but can you deliver? Deliver what? Oh, men who can keep their mouths shut, hungry men who will do anything. Provided the price is right. Oh, good. We understand each other. spectacular death, Mr. Hammer. So, let your imagination have full reign, and if her blood should stain that post of her face out there, that'd be good news, too. You're not a cannibal, too, are you? Can you do it, Hammer? I can do it. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Langdon. Yes. Uh, I need to know how Miss Irvin plans to arrive. Oh, uh, her own personal car, front entrance. Personal car. That'll be something big and flashy, eh? 
<laughs> You'd prefer something more anonymous, like an ordinary cab, perhaps? Yeah, and through the back door. We're all set. Hey? Bodyguards. The guarding of Annie Irvin's body, sir. Our stakeout's planned. Yeah, we're concentrating on the close quarter stuff. The nearby nut with a gun, the individual killer. I think the police should take care of the mob. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. Thanks. Glad to look after Annie for you, sir. I'm looking for Billy Taylor. Big Billy Taylor. I'm Big Billy. You are big, aren't you? What of it? Nothing. I've got a job for you. That's if you're interested in money. Big money. Almost as big as you. Let's walk. What do you mean he's demanding to see me? John Howard demanding? Sir, it was very important. If he sir. thinks I'm going to trek out to bed for prison, he's got yes, another. Yes, sir. Right outside the door. See, we. Th he mentioned Annie Irvin. Well, as her meeting's just a couple of hours away, we. Well, I'll bring him in. Come in. Glad you agreed to see me, George. I think perhaps you'll be glad too. You said important. I had a visit from my lawyer. He brought me some news from one of my men. He'd been out trying to drum up some converts for my cause. You mean find you a few more bully boys? George, listen to me. Someone beat him to it. Another man. Not drumming up a mob, just a selected few. The hardest, the heaviest. Not simply bully boys looking for a fight. Killers, George. All carefully chosen for one particular task. Annie? I think so. Why are you telling me? Well, I owe you a few favours. Besides, the last thing I want is Annie Irving dead. I'd be blamed immediately. Backlash would destroy me. Do you believe it? Yes, sir, I believe I do. Bowie? Yes, sir. So do I. My God, so do I. I'm obliged to you, John. I still don't like you, mind, but I'm obliged to you. Send them back. Mr. Howard. Hmm? These men being hired, do you know any more about them? Not much. What you'd expect. Big, tough. No sort of description you could hang your hat on. What will you do, sir? Cancel the meeting. She has to be made to cancel that meeting. Cancel it? Quite out of the question. Annie. No, 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 no. Not those flowers, dear. Take them away. The flowers can only be red and white. White to symbolize our cause. Red to remind people of the blood I shed for them. Red and white. Only red and white. Annie, I've given you the facts. You're expecting trouble. We always expect trouble. Men are being hired. That too. Well, it's happened before. I'm not here, not in my territory. I'm cancelling the meeting. Can you? I know your organisation is omnipotent, a law unto itself, but can you cancel my meeting? Can you, Stanley? What? Prevent free speech? The media would eat him alive. Well, that's my gamble, but at least you have the choice. What about your supporters, the ordinary people who'll be sitting out there? What about their safety? If Annie can take it, so can they. Otherwise, they shouldn't be here. George. I can remember a young student who once got his head bust open at a political meeting. He was standing up for the right of everyone to speak freely. 
We were both a lot younger then, Annie. She turned it down. Langton was right. We can't stop the meeting. If we did that, we'd be on our side. But there's something we can do. Meeting takes place here, right? Counter demonstration will probably use these streets. That's a hell of a large area to cover. I'm not going to cover it. Got to make it an empty area, a no-go area. Get onto police control, tell them to close off the area here, 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 and here. Nobody gets in beyond those points. There'll be a meeting, all right, but nobody will turn up. Testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. It's okay. It's fine. And please note, it is big. But they'll be standing. Oh, ten deep in the hours and even more outside. It's wonderful. You've done a wonderful job, Stanley. For you. Yes, for me. Stanley... Do you think George Cowley was exaggerating when he said there was going to be trouble? No more than the usual extremists. And I'm sure the police and George could handle it. Oh, George. Poor George. You never did tell me about him, did you? No. I never did, did I? I must go and get changed. Passed over half the town. You'd hardly fail to recognize her, could you? Not even you. Not yet. Not quite yet. Other things. Not good. There's a big crowd building up in the northeast sector. A big, ugly crowd. Who's running that sector? Patterson. Carly to Patterson, come in. Yes, sir, over. Everything all right? Over. Well, we've got the four Annie Irvings and the against. And at the moment, they're too busy skirmishing with each other to give us much trouble. Over. Well, let's hope it stays that way. Keep in touch. You too. Over and out. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Well, it's working. An old go area. 
Listen. Started. Coley to Patterson. Come in, Patterson. Come in. What's happening? They've started on us now. Bad? I've seen worse, sir. There's more people than we expected. More people than we were prepared for. I'll do your best. Over and out. Well, the police will hold them. They'll get their heads kicked in, then they'll kick a few heads in, and tomorrow the papers will be full of police brutality. I hope they hold them. I hope so, too. I'm going over to check Patterson's position for myself. You stay close to Annie. Miss Irvin, take good care of her. Yes, sir. cancelled. Because of them? Oh, we faced mobs before. Because of Carly. The whole area is sealed off. No one's getting through. Who told you? Doyle. Good, Miss Irvin. He cancelled my meeting. Not exactly. The meeting can still go on. It's just that some people are finding it hard getting here. But we're here. We're people. We'd like to hear your speech. Isn't that right, Ray? Absolutely right. Yes, we'd like to be swayed to the paths of peace and righteousness. I'll never forgive him for this. Never. That well, might just make you even. Mightn't it? It's none of your damn business. Set of blokes, and we're taking a hell of a hammering. I've ordered our reinforcements. Well, I better get here damn quick, sir. Doyle, there could be a breakthrough. I'm on my way back to you now, but don't wait for me. Get any Irvin clear. Pick her up and carry her if you have to. Do the best you can, eh? Yes, sir. Hold it back! Miss Irving. I faced a mob before and I've never run away from them. I don't intend to run now. Listen, Miss Irving, there's a mob out there. They're going to tear you to pieces now. They've just broken through. Annie, he's right. This time you have to run. Come on. I'll smuggle her out the back way. Turner will cover you from the roof. We'll hold the front and catch up with you. Annie, it'll make a bigger story than any speech. Do you that? I like a crowd. You can lose yourself in a crowd. He wait at the back. I'll bring the car on. Yeah. It's the man on the roof. Right. Irvin. I can see it from here. Sit a few blocks away. Run it! Run! Run, Miss Irvin! Run! Run! Dead. 
In the dressing room. Bottom of the trunk, there's a gun. Bring it. Stanley! They've lasted up. Those jokers I had, they've lasted up. Get the gun. Doll. Anyone else want to try? You! Over there! Right, drop everything! Everything! Including your pants! No, around the ankles is just fine. Hands on heads! All right, Ray? Yeah. How'd I do? You're gonna have to start using a smaller caliber gun. Where's Annie? I don't know if she's around here somewhere. Miss Evan? Annie? Over here, love. Oh. You sure you're okay? Arm's broken. Yeah? Don't cross in front. Listen, there's a wagon back there. I'll get it, okay? Ray? I think I might pass out. Look, I'll be a minute, okay? Yeah. You manage? Yeah. Bogey. Yeah. Seen that one before. Talking to Stanley. Yeah. Don't pass out. Stay behind me, Miss Irvin, please. them back. It's all over, Miss Servant. Sunshine, you can pass out now.
Where is he? George Cowley. Ah, wondered when you'd turn up. Right, we'll take you to him. Hello, sir. Hello, sir, how are you? Leave us. Yes, of course. I got helped, Annie. I'm sorry. But like me, that's one of the risks you take, isn't it? Yes. I'm going back to America, George, on the 12.30 flight. Well, it was nice of you to think of dropping by to see me. I had to see you, George. It was Isla, you know. She planned the whole thing. Uh, no, Annie, she told... No, she lied to you. She implicated Stanley because he's dead, because he can't deny it. Annie, you and I know the real truth. The real truth. You killed Stanley. He had a gun pointed at you. What do you want me to say, George? That you saved my life? He had a gun pointed at you. And you killed him for me. But you hated him, didn't you, George? You hated Stanley. No, Annie. That's the truth, isn't it, George? That's the real truth. And not because I hated him. Because I envy him. Will we see you again? No. I won't be coming back to this country. Our police are wonderful. Yes, wonderful. But I won't be coming back. But what about George? Uh, what about Mr. Kelly? You knew him very well once, didn't you? I never knew him at all. But you can tell him one thing from me. But I love him. Tell him. Me? <laughs> oh, yes, he asked you, you know. Well, you were there too. Tell him what? Well, you were, a bit where Siren. Came. Couldn't hear. Remember? Anyway, he'd have enough problems getting back on his own two feet. Yeah, keeping us in line. Exactly. So why tell him? Tell him what? 